So I've been using Vim since about 2019, and in 2025, I made the switch over to using NeoVim with LazyVim. So in this video, we're gonna go over why I made that switch and how I did it. This is not gonna be a full-blown demo of my NeoVim setup. That's gonna come in the next video, although all my setup is available in my .files repo here, which even has an install script to get everything up and running on Arch, uh, Debian, Ubuntu, including WSL2 support, and even Mac OS. You know, I've had that set up for years now where you can just run one command and it takes care of all that stuff for you. So the latest and greatest setup for NeoVim is there. I'll definitely going to make videos about that in the future. Uh, but for now, yeah, let's just focus on that 1000 foot overview of the process of switching to NeoVim. So yeah, back in early 2025, I switched over to NeoVim. You can actually find that in this one commit over here in the .files repo. Of course, this commit, you're not going to want to go through all the details and take them, you know, exactly because, you know, quite a few of these files have been updated since then. But yeah, this commit at least shows all the high level moving parts in one shot to make that switch over. And then, yeah, I've been using NeoVim basically for programming, for writing, for note taking. I've done videos about this one in the past. And uh, yeah, that's what I've been using it for in Vim as well for the last couple of years. So then you might be thinking, why? And this comes down to what I was thinking last year, where I'm sort of kind of done making compromises on the tools that I use, at least to the best of the abilities of the tools that we have. But this led to all sorts of different changes, switching from Jekyll to Hugo and, you know, many more things. And one of them was switching over to NeoVim. And it's not really like Vim was bad, right? But it has a couple of warts that I had to deal with in my day to day. You know, since text highlighting was broken in some files, like auto formatting didn't always work nicely with all the different file types and configs that I was dealing with. And I didn't want to really have to learn Vim script to customize or fork a whole bunch of those plugins. Some of them haven't been maintained for quite some years. It was also, at least on my machine, a little bit slow jumping around large files. And I had, you know, found myself opening CSV files once in a while with, you know, hundreds of thousands of rows on there. I also wanted to really start leaning on LSPs for more in-depth autocomplete and other features. You know, that next video I'm going to make around my demo setup with NeoVim, we'll go into more detail about that. But you can imagine typing some characters and then a nice little context menu pops up with important details about what you're typing, right? Maybe to autocomplete some function name or whatever makes sense for whatever language or, you know, config that you're dealing with there. Um, honestly, also, I just wanted to shake it up a bit and see where things were like on the other side. And I saw a whole bunch of different YouTube videos of folks using NeoVim, and I really liked what I saw there. It also has a really thriving community, and the direction of NeoVim itself looks like it was heading in a direction that looked really good to me. And uh, yeah, given my workflows there, you know, I've always been very terminal heavy here. So using NeoVim over VS Code felt like a good fit because, you know, I did consider VS Code for a while too, or I should say maybe going back to VS Code because I actually used VS Code for years in the past, done uh, at least blog posts about that one, not, maybe not so much videos. Um, but yeah, it's what I used before switching over to Vim. So yeah, ultimately decided to roll with NeoVim and here we are. And uh, yeah, now let's talk a little bit maybe about a game plan for switching to NeoVim because one day you're just going to wake up if you're going to do this switch and be like, okay, I've got my fully working Vim config. How do I actually just like switch over Neo NeoVim? And in my case here, you know, after using Vim for years, you know, I had a custom like 700 line config file with like 55 different plugins there. And it felt like a really, really daunting task, right? Just to install NeoVim and then just have an empty config and kind of rewrite everything in LuaScript from scratch, like trying to take my entire Vim RC file line by line to do that. Um, you know, I generally had an idea of what I wanted, but getting there felt like a very long road. And at this point, right, I wasn't even like 100% sure I was gonna switch over to NeoVim. It didn't really make sense to invest uh, weeks tweaking all of that at ground zero uh, on day one there. I mean, sure, like on paper, NeoVim seemed like a good idea, but it has to really be like a net improvement for me to continue to use it, uh, which by the way, spoiler alert, uh, now we're like eight months into the year, whatever it happens to be, still using it, still like it a lot. And uh, yeah, LazyVim kept coming up uh, again and again and again. And with the power of Docker, it was really easy to try everything out in a container before polluting my system with a bunch of dependencies. Actually, if you go to my dot files here, uh, this little install script that's available to do everything. Uh, it does have a copy pasteable thing where you can get set up to try it out in Docker without even modifying your system. So you can go and check th that out if you'd like. But yeah, I watched a whole bunch of different videos on YouTube and scoured the documentation for LazyVim. And uh, yeah, once I was sold, I just started to figure out like, you know, how do I actually go from my Vim setup to a working NeoVim setup with LazyVim? Uh, and again, like I just didn't want a replacement. I wanted something that's an actual like real improvement, right? trying to get away from side grades and, and go for complete upgrades. But after, you know, playing with the default lazy Vim sort of setup for a little bit, you know, I felt like it was time to make it my own pretty quickly. And, but from the beginning though, it was kind of interesting. I kind of realized like, well, you know, maybe I can just use lazy Vim, lazy Vim here to jumpstart my setup and then hand roll a completely custom config later. But here we are, you know, eight months down the line. And it's like that hand rolling hasn't been necessary because uh, lazy Vim is set up in such a way where yeah, it's quite nice to have its opinions and then also it's pretty easy to customize some stuff if you'd like. You know, when it comes to community support, 
The only thing about LazyVim that makes me feel a little bit uneasy is uh, it, along with a whole bunch of different plugins that it uses, they're all developed and maintained by one person. And that one person goes on break sometimes for months, and then certain plugin updates are uh, just not compatible anymore. And again, Fulky here, yeah, this is not a knock on him at all or his lifestyle. That sounds like he's having a great time doing everything that he's doing, and I'm actually super happy for him. But it doesn't mean holding off on upgrades once in a while. Thankfully, it's super easy to pin a plugin to a specific version to hold off updating it, so it's not really a problem in the end. Also, when you have a very big community following and it's really strong, one, these things happen infrequently, but when they do happen, usually it only takes like a day or two, maybe even a couple hours before someone posts a workaround or a slight patch to make things work. And that's really the value, right? And using something that a lot of other people use too. You don't feel like you're on an island by yourself figuring out how to make fire while the next island over, you know, you already have a decked out kitchen with an oven. So yeah, step one for me was kind of just like figuring out uh, what's in my vimrc file, what's important, what's not important here. So I just went through my entire config file to see which plugins I still actively use, and then also, you know, what configuration is important to me. And I was kind of surprised in a good way. You know, I was able to remove most of the plugins that I had there because those are either features now that are built into NeoVim or LazyVim pulled in comparable plugins to replicate the behavior. Um, TreeSitter also let me drop about 95% of my syntax highlighting related plugins. By the way, if you're not familiar with TreeSitter is, there is going to be a section a little bit coming up in a few minutes where we're kind of going to break down uh, LazyVim's ecosystem or NeoVim's ecosystem of tools here. Once I went through all the different plugins there, then I just went through, you know, basic uh, Vim settings there, mappings, auto commands, stuff like that. And I really took this as an opportunity to make my key mappings more consistent and also trim out the things that I weren't using anymore. And then also improve things since, hey, this is a fresh start. I might as well start doing things the best I can from day one here. And uh, yeah, my overall process basically was to carefully look at LazyVim's docs and figure out, you know, which required or optional plugins were available. I also looked at its source code to see exactly which settings were defined. Uh, this is really important, by the way, because, you know, we're going to talk about this pretty soon in the ecosystem section here. But yeah, LazyVim is basically just a collection of NeoVim plugins and configuration. So, you know, looking at its source code is quite easy, quite approach approachable there. And, you know, I never really learned Lua script, but with general programming experience, I found it to be pretty good. You know, it has quirks like any language here, but it's very readable, at least to me, to understand what's happening there, tracing code, doing stuff like that. And if you run across some syntax or a function name or something that just, you know, doesn't intuitively make sense, you're just one quick search away on the internet from figuring that thing out. So yeah, I actually find Lua script to be quite nice. And also if I wanted to see how a plugin worked, like visually, just like, you know, what is this thing actually doing there? Uh, I just looked it up on YouTube and found some videos. So I really like seeing how things work visually. So that was a huge help. And most of the plugins that LazyVim is using, they're well-supported plugins that have plenty of videos to go and check it out. I'm sure I'm going to make a, quite a few of those in the future as well. Um, overall, this was a very fun process to me, right? It was like going to a candy store, but with enough uh, restraint to be ruthless on what I wanted to indulge in. So yeah, let's talk a little bit now about the NeoVim LazyVim ecosystem. Um, yeah, when using new tools, right, being able to define their moving parts is super helpful. This way, you know where to look if something goes wrong or you want to tweak something. So then there's like NeoVim, right? This is the actual code editor itself. Then there's LazyVim, which is an opinion needed but customizable configuration for NeoVim. Then you have this thing called Lazy, which is a package manager for NeoVim plugins. Uh, actually, NeoVim itself is installed this way with many other different NeoVim plugins as well. Then there's a thing called Mason, which is a package manager for LSP servers, you know, some debugging tooling, linters, formatters, stuff like that. You know, for example, if you wanted to have a shell check, you know, to just check your shell scripts there, give you some feedback in your editor, as well as like Ruff if you're using something like Python, you know, various LSPs, things like this. Then there's TreeSitter, which is going to give you syntax highlighting for many different languages and config types. For example, you know, good syntax highlighting for Python, Ruby, Bash, and many, 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 many other different languages and config types too. Then there is Blink, which is uh, a completion plugin for LSPs, snippets, you know, commands and stuff like that. And then there's this thing called Snacks, which is a really nice collection of quality of life plugins for NeoVim. You know, Fuzzy Picker, I should uh, fix that to be Picker. Yeah, there's like an Explorer sidebar, split terminals and things like that. Uh, the next video where we go over demoing NeoVim, it's going to tie all this stuff together a little bit more. But these are at least like, you know, high level details of what some components are. And uh, the actual LazyVim community is also very helpful. You know, there's active discussions on GitHub. So when troubleshooting things, uh, don't be afraid also to look at LazyVim source code. Remember, mainly just pulls together a bunch of plugins and configuration on your behalf. But if you also run into something there, feel free to maybe post on the discussion board or, you know, maybe search there first to see if that question has been asked before. But yeah, overall, I'm actually super happy that I made the switch here. I feel like it has been a net upgrade in the end. 
And yeah, in a follow-up post and video, I'll be demoing and breaking down my entire new Vim setup here. It's already up on my dot files. And again, that install script will get everything up and running. Uh, it works on all available platforms on Linux, at least for Arch, Debian, and Ubuntu with WSL2 support, by the way. And then also it works with Mac OS 2. Uh, but with that said, Cool. Yeah. If you have any questions, definitely drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer all of them ahead of time here. And uh, looking forward to the next video. And with that said, if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.